It was like I was going along praying for the sick and almost every person, all the pain left and, and things were disappearing and moving around and people were crying and weeping under the power of God. Amen. You have to discern the towns and the places where you live. Because in America, you walk up to a person in the street, unless you can read the entire mail, they're not going to listen to you about Jesus. I'm telling you the truth. If you go to the hospital, the, there will be a security guard and you won't even get into the ward unless you have, unless you're a family member or an ordained chaplain. And so I want to say that the manila is wide open. I want to say that the, the fields are white for harvest. And so we are called to arise and shine and let God rise upon you. Heaven wants to come to earth. And we are divine portals through which the power and that which is in heaven comes through into the face of the earth. See, Jesus tells his disciples, his boys, how to pray in Matthew 6. He says, okay, boys, this is how I want you to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. In other words, let your world Jesus that knows no pain, knows no sickness, no disease, no suffering, let it come and let it touch down and invade this earth. And so earth looks like heaven. And we are designed and we are commissioned by God to call the realm of heaven to invade the earth. <laughs> Sounds good, eh? Because we are citizens of heaven. We are seated in Christ, Ephesians 2. We're seated in Christ in heavenly places, which means that right now you're in two places at once. You're on earth and you're in heaven. And so you have authority because you're seated in Christ to release the things of heaven onto the earth through the name of Jesus. I feel like I can go so many different ways here, but... I love you guys. You guys are awesome. I think I should come back. <laughs> I'll tell you a couple of testimonies and then I'll talk about the glory of God and then we're going to pray. Okay? Because it's time. I, I was in the healing rooms, leading the healing rooms, and the Lord showed me a quick picture of two eyes with color. And I said, Lord, what is this? And he says, Somebody here is colorblind. And somebody here might be colorblind. And so I went up to the man and he came up to me. I said, who's colorblind here? He comes up to me. He is 70 years old. He comes up to me and he says, I'm colorblind. I only see black and white. So I said, okay, Jesus can heal you. So I just obey the Lord. I put my hands on his eyes and I take my hands away. And he looks around like this. The first time in 70 years, wow. he has seen color. And his jaw is dropping like this. And then uh, he said something remarkable. He said, Ryan, I thought that I was going to die and go to heaven. And only in heaven, I will begin to see color. <laughs> but then he said this. He said, I guess this is what it looks like when heaven invades earth. Yeah. Another testimony. This lady comes up and she has a, a she had broken her neck through jumping off a building, <laughs> and she had a fused C three and C four, which means that metal has been put in there, and then a metal plate over here, and she could not move her head from the left to the right, and so we begin to pray for her, and suddenly we begin to smell metal burning. <laughs> and you know what you want to know what it smells like it smells like those old fillings you know when you go to a doctor and you get that smell a horrible metal smell smells exactly like that and then we start praying and the fire of god is just all over her and uh she she starts freaking out she's like i can taste metal i can taste metal and she's and all these people are coming because they can smell metal and uh so I said, feel for the metal, and she feels, and there's no metal. She can't, has, can't feel the plates. 
And then I said, well, move your neck. And she starts to move her neck like this. And then she goes like this. <laughs> Something she couldn't do before. And then she said, well, I'm ready to be a headbanger for Jesus now. <laughs> <laughs> Look at your hands real quickly. Declare of your hands that after me. These hands are loaded. These hands are loaded. Jesus Christ lives inside of me. Jesus Christ lives inside of me. The resurrected one lives inside of me. The resurrected one lives inside of me. The same power that rose Jesus Christ from the dead lives inside of me. The same power that brings Jesus from the dead lives inside of me. When you believe that, when you believe that, you put your hands on a person and suddenly heaven gets loosed onto that person. See, you're not looking for a greater anointing. You're looking for a greater yielding. You're yielding to Christ in you, the hope of glory. Because a resurrected one lives inside of you. You have an anointing, 1 John says, from the most high. You know, hunger is amazing. Hunger is something that grips a person and says, God, you told me I could have this and I want it bad. But there's a difference between hunger and frustration. There's a difference between hunger and desperation. Hunger is a sign of sonship. Desperation is a sign of orphan thinking. Hunger says that there's a table that the Lord has set before me, a feast of his inheritance, of the promises of God, that these sounds will accompany those that believe, that I am prospered in the Lord, that every need will be met from the Christ Jesus. All this stuff is on the table. And I stand here, and hunger takes me from where I am to where the promise is. If you don't know what you're hungering for, you will get desperate. When you don't know who you are as a child of God, you will long just to eat the crumbs off the table. But when you know that your Father has promised something for you, there comes inside of you a grace that works through the promise. Amen. See, unless you have a promise, you don't have the grace released from the promise to take you from where you are to where the feast is. And so I would do this, my friends. I would be reading the Bible that the same power that rose Christ, Jesus Christ from the dead lives inside of me. And so what I would do in my prayer room, I would be like, God, I thank you that the same power that rose Jesus Christ from the dead lives inside of me. No, that feels good. Yeah. And I'll be like, the same power that rose Jesus Christ from the dead lives inside of me. And then I'll be like, the same power. And I would start to just begin to burn in my heart. And information becomes re- revelation. And revelation always leads to manifestation. Yeah. So unless it's manifested, it hasn't become revelation. It's just become information. And so you think, oh, Jesus heals. I know because of the Bible. But there's a difference between suddenly revelation has come into your heart because Jesus is healed. And that takes you and just puts you in a hunger inside of you and it leads you to the place of manifestation. Does that make sense? Okay. Where am I going with this? I don't know. <laughs> the greatest way to flow and the gifts of the Holy Spirit is to flow in the fruits of the Holy Spirit. When you can tap into the fruits of the Holy Spirit, then you you partner and you open yourself up to heaven releasing through you the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus looked on the pride and he compassion on them. One of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is love. Suddenly you look at a person not because they're a project, but because God so loves them, and suddenly love explodes inside of you and you begin to move in the gift of prophecy. You begin to move in the gift of miracles and healing. Because you've suddenly got God's heart and God's fruits moving through you. That's another thing. The fruits of the Holy Spirit are not your fruits. They're the fruits of the Holy Spirit work through you. Which means that you can't try to love more people, love people more. And you can't try and have joy more. You just hang out with the Holy Spirit. And the fruits of hanging out with the Holy Spirit are lots of love and joy and peace. So many people are trying to love people more when all they should do is just be like, Holy Spirit, I love you. (laughs) We love because He first loved us. The ability for me to love you is directly proportional about how much I can receive of His love. 
Have you ever been to a church service when you came in grumpy? And then after worship, you've been touched by God and you're hugging everybody on the way out? <laughs> it's the fruits of being with Holy Spirit. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to, uh, I didn't even know why I should do this, but I'm going to do it because I felt like the Lord told me. I'm going to quickly speak about the glory of God. The glory of God is the person of God. Amen. Exodus 33 and 34 says, Moses said, Lord, show me your glory. And suddenly the Lord declared his name. And he said, the Lord is slow to anger, gracious and compassionate, abounding in love. And God passed by Moses and the glory is the person of God. Amen. He is the glory and the lift of our heads. Amen. Jesus is the exact radiance, Hebrews 1, and the exact radiance and glory of the Father. And so you see in the beginning, Adam and Eve walked in the garden in the glory of God. And as they're walking in the glory of God, I believe that the glory of God was their covering. They were naked and they didn't know it. And that's why Romans says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory. When they sinned, the glory departed, and they suddenly saw their nakedness. The glory is a radiance of God. That's why when, Mo, when Jesus went up to um, the Mount of Transfiguration, His glory lit up. Uh, Stephen, his fa face shone with the glory of God. And so the glory is the person of God. Amen. The Bible says in Habakkuk that the, the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. As the waters cover the sea. Jesus said, Father, show them the glory that we have had since the beginning. In heaven there is no light, Revelation 20 says. But Jesus is the light and the glory of heaven. So in other words, there is no light. But the heaven is lit up by the very Son of God. By the glory of God. Why am I saying this? Because the glory of God is the atmosphere of heaven. Uh -huh. And when the glory of God comes into a place, the dancing hands of God begin to move. There's a difference between flowing and the anointing and in the glory. The anointing is what God does, and the glory is who He is. So, and... Um, and Isaiah 9, it shows us a little bit about what the, the anointing does. It says, as in the days of Midian, the Lord has shattered the yoke of the oppressor. And then we look at Isaiah 61. The anointing of God binds up the broken heart and sets the captives free. It declares the favorable will you of the Lord's favor. What I'm trying to say is this, is that the anointing comes, and we need the anointing. And it comes and it blows up like a bulldozer all resistance. Or demonic resistance. You might come into this room and you are de depressed. Suddenly during worship, the anointing is released through a musician. And suddenly the, the flowers around your head, they go. That's what the anointing does. It shatters, breaks, bondages on people's love. It heals where spirits of infirmities have been attached to people's body. The anointing of God comes and it breaks that thing. The anointing is what God does. The glory of God is who He is. That's why the Bible says the gifts of God are without repentance. Crazy as it might seem, that Jesus said that there are people that can even cast out demons and heal the sick. But He says, get away from me for I never knew you. Because if you begin to move in the anointing, you can actually see people healed. You can actually see deliverances. You can see God breaking out. But you can also do it apart from knowing Him. But when the glory comes in, it's God comes in the room. Does that make sense to you guys? So I can pray for you and we're going to have a partition time and a lot of it's going to be the anointing. But the, the glory comes when there is oneness. You see in John 17 when the Lord prays, He says, I pray that there will be one. And then He says, 
Lord, show them the, the glory that we have shared from the beginning. And where there's a company of people together that come together, the, the realm of heaven, the timeless realm where there is no time, the eternal realm comes down into the room. A, a, an invisible and sometimes visible cloud comes down into the room and suddenly people, uh, suddenly there's an open heaven over a place. And angels of God are released from the throne of God. And people start getting healed with not even someone praying for them. People get delivered with not even praying because there's an open heaven. Because the glory, because the person of God has come down. Is that making sense to you guys? Yes. And so when you go out in the streets, a lot of it is... I want to say another quick thing and then I'm going to stop. Authority creates the wave. Power rides a wave into glory. In other words, you come up to a man and he's on the streets and he has a sore shoulder. And you are not feeling the Holy Spirit. But you know that you have authority in the name of Jesus. That the Bible says in Mark 6 that these signs will accompany those that believe. And suddenly you pray and say, shoulder in the name of Jesus be healed. Now, you are using your authority... The authority unlocks the anointing, and the anointing heals the person. When the anointing touches the heart of a person, suddenly the presence of God comes upon them, and then the glory of God begins to get released. Is that making sense? And so we don't need to have uh, like a Benny Hinn wire for us to move in healings. We can move in authority. But when we're together... We can go, Acts 2, together, the glory comes. Acts 4, we're together, the glory comes. The building is shaken. Amen. One quick thing. At the beginning, when God spoke the earth into being, there was the glory of God hovering the earth. God spoke into the eternal realm of the glory, and He created, because the glory of God hovered the earth and God spoke and said let there be light the word was released into the realm of glory and light was created he spoke worlds into being by parting with the glory and so in the glory when the glory of God comes you can declare a thing and it's established because of the atmosphere in the room Whereas if you go out in the streets, you declare the same thing and there's not the same results per se because of the atmosphere. Is that making sense to you? Okay, so let's pray. <laughs> Can we all stand up? I wonder, it wouldn't be bad if I uh, asked for the chairs to be standing. Yes, so no we, could, we can just go quickly down the line. No, no problem. And Mitch, uh, are we... Wait. Come in this place with fire.
up to you. Look, grab the hand of your neighbor. Okay. Lift your hands up to heaven. The Bible says that where the dwell, dwell brothers dwell in unity, there the Lord commands a blessing. And so I'm going to decree a commanded blessing on you guys. I'm going to come to three. And when I come to three, I'm going to declare fire.
Lord, we just thank you. Lift your hands. Just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the things we receive, the revelation and the impartation. We thank you, God. I feel that right now, let's just close our eyes and maybe, I, I believe some of you, God, will be able to speak to you about this impartation that you have received. Maybe some of you, God, will talk about going out the streets and praying for the sick or going to your neighbor at the door next to you and pray for someone who is sick or maybe, I don't know, maybe with the loss. I just, let's just have a short while and just allow God to speak to you. Lord, what do you want me to do? Or maybe just God just wants you to spend time, an extended time of prayer, praying for the revival that is coming to Manila. Nakakatuwa po, uh, for this month, paulit-ulit po ako nakatanggap that uh, God wants to send revival. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, we've been in revival for a while, but this month I've been receiving a lot from different people. So I really believe that a new wave is coming. A new wave is coming. So maybe that's a thing that God wants to talk to you about.